whether it's architecture or or just hard edge data statistics, I still think the future the future is is better than the past. I think the future is brighter. I think that the pandemic is um, uh, has its tragic, horrific side of you know so many of us lost dear friends to the pandemic. Um, but I think in the arc of history, um, cities come back stronger and better as a result of, uh, of crises. And um, um, we know that uh, the cholera epidemic in the mid 19th century uh, created in London modern sanitation as we know it. It cleaned up the Thames, it created the Thames Embankment. The same epidemic in the United States uh, created clean water, the reservoir, the roots of Central Park, which um, you cannot think of New York without thinking of Central Park. It's emblematic of the city. Now, I'm not saying these things would not have happened if you didn't have cholera, but it's accelerated, it's magnified the rate of change. And, um, and I think historically, the pandemic will be the same. It's, it's accelerated the move towards the pedestrian in cities, the move away from space occupied by, by vehicles. That was happening, but it's accelerated. It's also changed public perception of the relationship with, with nature. We've seen a proliferation of outdoor terraces. Um, uh, working from home was, uh, was already evident, but it's magnified that. Um, the workplace as a social gathering space is something that was more fringe. So if I talk from personal experience, working with the Steve Jobs and Mike Bloomberg, or going back in the past, a building like Willis Faber in the 1970s, which was about uh, landscape roofs, swimming pools, it was about lifestyle. Those aspects of the workplace will become more mainstream. The city will become, I think, greener, quieter, uh, the technology of being able to predict a microclimate, for example, um, uh, more trees which will absorb carbon dioxide. So we could, we could see all these aspects coming together. And um, you know, cities are the generators of wealth, of innovation, uh, of prosperity, um, and, and all the good things in life. We're social animals. We, 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 we come together. Um, and the city is really uh, two elements. It's the individual buildings, but it's also the infrastructure, the connections, the public spaces, the bridges, the subways, the portals, the harbours, the airports. Um, uh, the infrastructure is the urban glue that binds the individual buildings together. And the design professions um, are totally integrated into that mix of buildings and infrastructure. So in that sense, we hold the key to, to the future. Um, but we don't make the decisions. We're not developers, but we do have a power of advocacy and we should use uh, that to the maximum effect. And in this process, we have to be absolutely clinical and objective in terms of separating fact from fiction, um, from hysteria, from prejudice. And the clue to much of this is energy, electrical energy. And at the moment, that is generated by fossil fuel. And we do have the technology for clean, carbon-free fuel, where we can control from cradle to grave, the waste. And statistically, those societies which consume more energy are people live longer, life expectancy is greater, infant mortality is less. We have greater sexual and political freedom, less violence, notwithstanding the horrific exception, of course, of the, you know, the Ukraine war at the moment. Uh, but that notwithstanding, the big drift is, um, is, is a positive drift. So 
Um, so yes, we do have an important role to play.